लगाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है एक तुझको अपना पाया एक तुझको एक तुझको अपना पाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है सब के मकान दिल का मकिन तू सब के मकान दिल का मकिन तू कौन सा दिल है जिसमें नहीं तू कौन सा दिल है जिसमें नहीं तू हर एक दिल में हर एक दिल में तू ही समाया हर एक दिल में कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है मलायक क्या इंसान क्या मलायक क्या इंसान क्या हिंदू क्या मुसलमान क्या हिंदू क्या मुसलमान जैसी चाह जैसी चाह जैसी चाह कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है खाब में क्या हर देवला में क्या खाब में क्या हर देवला में क्या तेरी परस दिशा होगी सब जा तेरी परस दिशा होगी जा आगे तेरे शीरा आगे तेरे शीरा सबने झुकाया आगे तेरे शीर सबने झुकाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया तुझसे हमने को लगाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है अर्श से लेकर फर्श जमीन तक अर्श से लेकर फर्श जमीन तक और जमीन से अर्श बारी तक और जमीन से बारी तक जहाँ मैं देखा जहाँ मैं देख तू ही नजर आया जहाँ मैं देख तू ही नजर आया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया तुझसे हमने 
दिल को लगाया जो कुछ चाहे सो तू ही है जो कुछ चाहे सो तू ही है सोच समझा देख भला तू सोच समझा देख भला तू ऐसा न कोई दुंदा निकाला ऐसा कोई दुंद निकाला अब ये समझ में अब ये समझ में साफर किया अब ये समझ में अब ये समझ में साफर किया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है जो कुछ है सो तू ही है तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया जो कुछ है This was a song by Jafar, who was, a, I think, a Mughal emperor in the later days, and the song by Sargam Shah from Berkeley Vedanta Society, devotee there, and Maitri was on the tabla. Om Tejosi Tejomai Dehi, Viramasi Viramai Dehi, Balamasi Balamai Dehi, Ajosi Ajomai Dehi. Manurasi Manung my dehi, Sahosi Sahomai dehi. If I then power art thou, fill me with power. Vela art thou, fill me with Vela. Strength art thou, fill me with strength. Vital energy art thou, fill me with vital energy. Resolve against wrong art thou, fill me with that resolve. Fortitude art thou, fill me with fortitude. Om Shantihi, 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 peace, peace, peace. What I want to tell that this was a song very favorite of Swami Vivekananda. The topic today is strengthening the mind. Swami Vivekananda said, This is a great fact. Strength is life, weakness is death. Strength is felicity, life eternal, immortal. Weakness is constant strain and misery, weakness is death. Men are taught from childhood, they are weak and sinners. Teach them that they are all glorious children of immortality, even those who are the weakest in manifestation. Let positive, strong, helpful thought enter into their brains from very childhood. Lay yourself open to these thoughts and not to weakening and paralyzing ones. Say to your own minds, I am he, I am he. Let it ring day and night in your minds like a song, and at the point of death declare, I am he. That is truth. The infinite strength of the world is yours. This is the one question I put to every man, woman or child, when they are in physical, mental or spiritual training. Are you strong? Do you feel strength? For I know it is truth alone that gives strength. I know that truth alone gives life. And nothing but going towards reality will make us strong. And none will reach truth until he is strong. Every system therefore which weakens the mind, makes one superstitious, makes one move, makes one desire all sorts of wild impossibilities, mysteries and superstitions I do not like. 
because its effect is dangerous. I am responsible for my fate. I am the bringer of good unto myself. I am the bringer of evil. I am the pure and blessed one. We must reject all thoughts that assert to the contrary. This is the only way to reach the goal, to tell ourselves and to tell everybody else that we are divine. And as we go on repeating this, strength comes. All the strength and succor you want is within yourselves. Therefore, make your own, own future. The remedy for weakness is not brooding over weakness, but thinking of strength that is already within them. Instead of telling them they are sinners, the Vedanta takes the opposite position and says, you are pure and perfect, and what you call sin does not belong to you. What makes a man stand up and work? Strength. Take of the veil of hypnotism, which you have cast up in the world, send not out thoughts and words of weakness into humanity. Know that all sins and all evils can be summed up in that one word, weakness. Some more quotations. I like quotations. How can there be fear if there is only one existence? The first thing to be got rid of by him who would be a jnani is fear. Fear is one of the worst enemies. As long as we, as we believe ourselves to be even the least different from God, fear remains with us. But when we know ourselves to be the one, fear goes. Of what can it be afraid? Oneness alone is love and fearlessness. Separation leads us to hatred and fear. There is no religion of fear in the Upanishads. It is one of love and one of knowledge. Aye, it is the only religion of the world where, where you find the word abhi, fearless, used again and again. In no other scripture in the world is the adjective applied either to God or to man. Abhi, fearless. Be bold and fear not. Be not afraid of anything. You will do marvelous work. The moment you fear, you are nobody. Bhakti is not the outcome of fear or greediness. If you read the Vedas, you will find this word always repeated, fearlessness, fear nothing. Fear is a sign of weakness. A man must go about the, his duties without taking notice of the sneers and the ridicule of the world. Be free from fear. Strengthening the mind. Everybody sometime or other feels that he is not equal to the task or some type of feeling of weakening effect comes on him. So everybody feels the need for strengthening himself and his understanding. Self-improvement books and psychological type of books, of course, will give you how to apply some of the ideas that present before the people and the society. Our common sense will dictate what is the antidote for either fear or weakness. Samuel Johnson, the famous thinker, at one time wrote, that anything can, that can lessen the fear in man has got a claim on human society, even if it is not true, mm -hmm. even if it is an imagination. Being strong is the important idea. And psychologically, it is valid. A child is there at night. The parents want to go out, but say that we are in the next room. The child sleeps. They are not going out, tell the child we are going out, child will be anxious, thinking alone. 
That means what you think is more important than what actually is the fact. Therein comes the idea of imagination, thought. And of course for adults, if you know that this should be the truth, then more strength comes, faith develops. See, first comes belief. Beliefs get solidified into a sort of a faith. Faith, when it is stronger, becomes conviction. And Vedanta says, conviction will develop into a realization. So, with Turiyananda, a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna said, today's imagination becomes tomorrow's realization. Now, so Vivekananda is advocating this idea that you are divine, you are spiritual in nature. Vedanta brings this discussion. What is the nature of man? Of course, the body comes first, but they relegate the body because it is not permanent. It is temporary, hundred years. Mind is constantly changing, so mind also cannot be the, our reality. It's temporary, temporary reality, of course, like putting on, say, Japanese dress on an American girl. It is there today, tomorrow it won't be there. So body is a changeable aspect. Mind also is a changeable aspect. And that which is changeable is not our permanent nature. So Vedanta asserts the ultimate, permanent, persistent nature of man is not the body, not the mind, but the spirit. Now Vivekananda says that we have already hypnotized, hypnotized ourselves. Somebody asked him, Sir, you are telling I am the spirit, I am the spirit, I am the Atman, I am the Atman. Are you not hypnotizing and thinking I am the Atman? His answer was, I am, it is dehypnotization. You have already hypnotized yourself into thinking. I am a weak person, I am a helpless person, I have nothing, I am a sinner. But you are forgetting your real nature. You are defective in your changeable nature. In your body and mind aspect you are defective, but not in your innate nature. So that was the way he faced it. It is dehypnotization. Already you have hypnotized yourself. So that is the basic idea that once you know as he was arguing, as in Brihadaradna Kaupanishad, it is said, all fear comes from seeing a double. If you see somebody else, who goes there? Friend or foe. Hmm? There was a sentence used to shout out friend or foe, or some sort of response. But if you know that other person, the moment we ag agree that another person is there, he can be my rival, hmm? or I may fear from him. So Vedanta says, no, remember that God is there everywhere. Or there are the manifestations of the same reality, of God, Brahma. Of course, in day-to-day -day life, that doesn't mean you have to be cautious. Hmm? You recognize whole day-to-day -day life behavior is based on duality, based on differences. But these differences can be transcended at a certain stage through realization. That is the important point. So, Sri Ramakrishna says, Narayana, God is there in every being, but you cannot go and hug a tiger. That means commonsensical understanding should be there. A philosophy can help you to a certain extent when it is a theory. If it become an ex becomes an experience, then only you are actually free, absolutely free from fear. But till or until then, some fear will remain, but it will lessen. Say, if somebody believes that I, say, I am one with the totality, as Vedanta asserts, you are one with Brahman, the ultimate reality. That means there is no death. Death is for the physical body. Now, if somebody believes in it, not in an experience, even belief will give them some hope when you become old, sick, or dying, instead of dying for 20 years, thinking I am dying, I am dying, uh, keep uh, some hope that, no, I have got, if I die, some other body will be given. If you know your car has become old, somebody promises you will give a good body, who will not change it? A good car. <laughs> hmm? Only we are not very sure that we shall get the body, and what, what shape it will be. That makes the difference. So if somebody can believe, that he will have a reincarnation idea comes. Hindus and Buddhists believe that life is not finished with one body. 
life cannot come out out of nothing and go out into nothing or something, uh, heaven or hell or this or that. They said, no, it is illogical. See, unless there is a past, there cannot be a future also. Suddenly it comes, suddenly goes. It must have been existing in some other form. That is the main point. It must, be, must have been existing in some other form. So this is the major point they are making. That recognition of the permanent nature of man is the major way of removing fear. And Vivekananda recommended that meditation wants pure nature. That if you want strength, you want hope, you want courage, think of your spiritual nature and bring all the strength out. If you think about your weak part nature, then weakness only will develop. That's why as I read, he was advocating thinking of strength, his famous quotation, which partly I have given, telling all the time I am diseased, I am diseased, will not cure the disease. Medicine is necessary. Telling all the time I am weak, I am weak, will not cure the weakness. Strength is necessary. And strength doesn't come market. And strength doesn't come by thinking of weakness all the time. If you want, want strength, think of strength. In, there is a record in the reminiscences that in near San Francisco, so Vivekananda went on a retreat with some of the people in Taylor's Park. Even now you can see if you go that side towards Olima, Point Reyes. Tents are switched, so Vivekananda, the time for meditation came. He said, you can meditate on whatever you like, but I should meditate on the heart of a lion. The idea is that strength is to be meditated upon. That is, the meditation should be done, done on the strength in a particular context. Especially those who are very timid, that may be very beautiful, very you know, sustaining type, strengthening type of experience. So his whole assertion is from the original point. It is psychologically valid. Normally when you pray, most of the time you pray for something. Two types of prayer normally we have, either to get, O oh Lord, save us from trouble, or O oh Lord, give us something special. <laughs> you see? That is the normal. 80% of life is like that. Sometime or other, we all pray. In young days, you may not care. But by the time you are, one illness has come, then you think about it. Or somebody near and dear one dies, then you think about it. And Charles Lamb, the English writer, writes, no young man below 30 thinks that he's mortal. After that, because of experience of seeing other people dying, the thought comes. Anyhow, as Vivekananda said, as long as there will be death in society, so long people will think of philosophy. Think about the part, what is the meaning of all this. Now, psychologically valid why? When you pray, you have got headache. Oh Lord, I have headache, I have headache, please do something. Better they say, no, that is not a good method. You assert that you, are, you have no disease. Because sub subconscious mind tries to absorb the idea, I am diseased, I, am, I have got headache, I have got headache. And one time you say, please remove it. Instead of that, say, I am healthy, I am healthy, I am healthy, though I am not healthy. Hmm? So subconscious mind will absorb the idea. So somebody raised the question, but I am telling a lie. Hmm? I am sick, but I am telling I am healthy. How can I have, how am I healthy? No, you are telling the higher truth. Now, when you see I am sick, with what part of yourself you are identifying? With the body? Or mentally sick mind? But Vedanta is arguing you are not the body nor the mind. The sickness of the body and the sickness of the mind is not yours. So you are telling a higher truth, a larger truth, that way. But then the people may argue, but still I feel it. You feel it because of your identification. Uh, you have got a very costly dress. Hmm? Dress is on your body, a shirt is on your body. It catches fire, you catch fire. You remove the shirt, put it on a hanger, it catches fire there, it doesn't catch fire here. Similarly, you have got a very costly dress, you feel very bad if it is torn or something happens. It is disidentified, but still you feel bad. Why? Because of identification is my dress. If it is your dress, I don't mind so much. I may sympathize, but I don't <laughs> mind so much. 
So Vedanta says it is because of identification with my son, my daughter, my parents, my house, my this. So because of identification. Now how can I lessen identification? Absolutely to remove is difficult. Absolutely to remove is difficult unless you know you are the Atman, nothing can. But then uh, when we advocate a philosophy, we always take for granted that 50% of the philosophy will be put into practice. Hmm? Uh, when you say you are healthy, healthy, subconscious mind absorb the idea. idea. So a theory helps you to a great extent or to some extent accord as much as you can put it into practice. And then when it becomes a realization, that's a different question. But not a completely different because you are in the line, on the process. Instead of completely imaginary things, you think something which is probably the right thing. Why do I know that I am the Atman? Because the scriptures have said so, great teachers have said so, every religion in some form will have to believe in immortality of the soul, continuity of the soul. So that is the important idea. The assertion. That's why Buddha Oham, Shuddha Oham, Buddha Oham, Niramaya Oham, famous quotations from the Upanishads and the later scriptures. I am pure. I am illumined. I am healthy. But uh, average man may say, but I am not pure, I am very impure. I am not illumined, I have got too much ignorance. I am not <coughs> free from sickness. But the idea is you are asserting your spiritual nature or your spiritual nature which has no defect. See, normally we identify with our animal nature and modern psychology has helped it. Because of the evolution theory, the idea is man has evolved from animal or whatever. So the animal aspects, are, you are, all these troubles you are having because you are not a full animal. If you are a full animal, not trouble. <laughs> you must remember art, science, religion, everything has been thought about because man has stayed away from animal nature. You see? So it is the lot of man, you cannot avoid it. This is, this is the lot of man, you completely cannot avoid because mind also has evolved. So there is the idea that you assert with that spiritual nature. Whereas all the time we have been stressed, no, you are the animal or you are the selfish being. Selfishness has been so much lionized and nowadays it is becoming more and more as the American influence is spreading throughout the world, everywhere it is coming, that idea. I for myself, I shall enjoy. Demo part of democracy, of course. Uh, I shall enjoy. Whether you suffer or not, that is not my job. But if I feel at all, as a society, it will be an enlightened self-interest. What it is called, but pure central self-interest is not good. If my neighbor's house is unhealthy, my children will get sick, so I go and clean his house. If there is some pockets of communism, uh, America goes with all its wealth and tries to recover it, so that there is no opposition to the democratic way of life, which is wonderful. But democratic countries are there who are not helped. Normally they are where they are prone. Now this is called enlightened self-interest. That is not pure self-interest. I go out and sacrifice also. But whenever there is a conflict, I follow my, my whatever groove I am, that idea. So their idea that some, some people must be available in society to sacrifice for the sake of others. Other social fabric will not be there. Three ideas have impressed human society for millennia. The idea of competition, which Darwin and others have pointed out, man as an animal, competition is the idea. But competition is an idea in the hunting stage, if you read the history. But the moment man came to the agricultural stage, Cooperation became the law of life. Cooperation became the law of life. Man found out if alone, instead of stri striving you know, alone, if I ten people join together, we can do better things. But then still, in spite of all mutuality, Gita advocates mutuality. You be good, I be good. Mutually let us help. And that is normal human life is based on Mutuality. You love me, I love you. If you don't love, I don't care. So that is normal. And that is normal human situation. 
एनिमल सिचुएशन आई वॉन्ट एंजॉयमेंट वो दर यू एंजॉय नॉट इज दैट इज योर बिजनेस बट आई वॉन्ट एंजॉयमेंट दैट इज एनिमल लेवल बट दे सेट कॉन्सिक्रेशन और सेक्रीफाइस थिंकिंग फॉर दी अदर पर्सन इज ऑल्सो नेसेसरी फॉर द अपकीप ऑफ सोसाइटी सम ऑफ आर अदर इन सोसाइटी सम पीपल आर सेल्फिश इन स्पेक्ट ऑफ ऑल ट्रेनिंग दिस दैट टू कॉम्पेन्सेट दैम समबडी एल्स विल हैव टू बी अनसेल्फिश If you are not unselfish, society will compel you. That is how the taxation system of come. Why taxation? If it is pure democracy, pure, free for all, why taxation? To balance it, to balance it. That you willingly will not give, so we shall compel you to give. Otherwise, social fabric, social disharmony will come. So consecration. If is this sacrifice is voluntary, then there is no pain. If unwillingly lose money, you feel bad. But if you willingly give somebody starving some country, you send money to Africa or so, and feel happy and elated. I am such a good man. I have given so much money. You see, but you are pickpocketed. You feel very bad. You see, though the re actual result you have lost money. You see, but because of the motivation or voluntariness, willingness makes suffering tolerable. Like a mother suffers for the child, the parents. Uh, give you all, their all their earnings for bringing up the children because of love that becomes bearable or even it becomes a duty in the human level itself uh, an animal child if you have noticed a calf or something being born in a few minutes or a few hours it can look after itself but a human child requires long protected nurture so the In human level, the theory of selfishness alone has broken down. But still, it is being taught through the society. As I remembered uh, when the election was coming, Bush, President Bush, was advocating, defending his work in Middle East. That we have gone for American self-interest. that means the politicians recognize the americans life love self interest understand easily right? if you are an indian politician you would have said oh we have gone for sacrifice eh, for the middle east they are suffering so much and our duties to sacrifice and renounce that was they would have presented that means mind is trained according to years of training selfishness is a thing which is immediately understood of course immediately understood <coughs> when i first came to this country <coughs> barkly i was in barkly for some time as to the university the cars of the park car parking so it done there cbr tire damage don't back back bear back your car as you not trust in human nature you see of course they are from experience they found out if you trust 5% 10% or not obey the rules so the general rule for everybody don't go backwards then there will be serious tire damage so partly it is goes on partly appealing to human nature higher nature and part to the animal nature rules laws that has been brought in and here so the idea is the man's higher nature is to be spoken about so that less need of laws and rules by laws to great extent you can do it but as i say it will be painful suffer painful renunciation you have to renounce give up your self interest share with your goods of life willingly willingly you will have to do it but if it is done willingly the result will be better now how the mind will be strengthened by accepting a theory that is my major point that once once you can try to assert this idea or strengthen through a philosophy then it will be easier to accept so to actually strengthen the mind four important practices will be necessary normal common sensical things of course you already know or a little self improvement type of books they will give you varieties of psychological way of presentation and all that how to do it so i vivek on the supports that idea he was asked sir 
if a man says, I am something, I can do this, I can do this, will he not become proud? He said, I not, don't mind if he becomes proud. A little pride we can accept. So he says, even if you are not quite established in the idea that I am the self, I am the undying spiritual nature, still assert it. Assert is that I have got infinite strength, infinite potential. The more you assert, the more it will come out. In the process, if some people go wrong, he said, it is better than telling them all that you are hopeless, you are weak. That is. So he often, when among his disciples and Edma, other people, he would try to evoke their good side rather than the bad side. I remember many years ago, one young man came to join here, become a monk. And after some time, he wanted to go away. Very good, very nice type, everything, educated, this, that. So I asked, why, do you want, why did you come and why do you want to go away? Well, Swami, I am not as good as you think. <laughs> huh? Huh? How bad you are? No, I am terrible. I said, that is called spiritual struggle. A man has got bad side, he has got good side. You assert the good, then you become a spiritual man gradually, or a good man, moral man. Society requires moral man. If everybody is to be controlled by the rod, then how that society will be there? Society will be a terrible place to live in, unless there is voluntary cooperation about some rules and regulations. Of course, you must know that one of the axioms of jurisprudence is that the majority of the people of society like that, accept that law. Then only it can be made a law. Otherwise, it will be a tyrannous law. See? That is recognized in jurisprudence. So that is the idea, that the good side of man, what is the source? Is it only for maintaining the society you are telling this? Or there is a real basis? There the philosophy comes to try to convince you that this is by analysis, by reasoning, by arguments, to convince you, yes, you are not finished with your body, something more is there. Then comes this mental technique. Technique is meditation of assertion. Every day asserting, I am strong, I am pure, I am free from defects like this. Say, I, I lack courage. Idea is assert courage. Think the soul is full of courage. Or theistic idea is God is full of courage. Oh Lord, please help me. But Vivekananda is not even that. He doesn't like too much. You are sad. You are the spirit. The moment you have admitted to God that you are weak, already you have, your mind has accepted the idea of weakness. So he would prefer that, no, you are not weak. I am strong. Bring it out from your own spiritual nature. The other was the theistic method. You admit that you have defects, this, that. Sri Ramakrishna sometimes he supports that idea. Uh, another training is that. That is their major idea. You feel that you are hopeless, then only the idea will come that I su surrender to God, who is all-powerful, will help me. Vedanta stress is, no, you are not hopeless. Assert and try to remember that you have got all the strength and bring out. A sort of combination is probably for, suitable for most of the people how to do it in moments of weakness. When you feel that you cannot assert at all, of course you'll have to take the help of, a, of God or a higher power which is behind. So this daily assertion, meditation means daily assertion of a particular time. either think of God. And most of the Hindu Buddhist meditation is not prayer. It is not asking. But that's a different idea. You know, ask also someday once a day you ask, I mean trouble, or after all, if the trouble is up to the uh, neck, up to the throat, it will come out. You can, even if you want to control, it will tell. You cannot avoid it. But uh, at least some part of the day should be kept asserting the defectless nature of ourselves. That is Vivekananda's special recommendation. He supports normal religion also. So that is about the daily technique. As you go on, Practicing it, gradually mind becomes stronger. Mind becomes stronger. In all religions, they have advocated austerity, fasting, this thing, that thing, all the restrictions. Why? Mind becomes strong. You cannot manage without a meal. They said, miss the meal, the Lord will be satisfied. Whether the Lord is satisfied or not, 
at least your mind will be stronger. Next time you know, yes, I can do it. This idea of retreats, previously I was not uh, uh, enamored by this retreats, uh, two days, four days, one day. Then I found our spiritual idea is daily you have to do little, little so that every time you try to remember. But I got converted to that idea later, that one day you do it, eight hours I have spent in spiritual thinking. That means confidence you gather the next day, and one hour at least I can sit. Isn't it? To give that confidence, then only it is useful. Otherwise, what is the use? In three months, I become very meditative. How much result is there? My character will not be changed. It will not be part of my nature, which is essential. Anyhow, so as a technique, assertion of the strength by meditation. By meditation. So as a corollary, sometimes some teachers or psychologists based on religious ideals, they think that you, if you've got illness, Assert that you are the spirit, you have no illness. Christian science and all that they often try to think, you have got some illness, the teacher comes, who is a, or an agent comes, who is a specialist in type of, he comes, his major technique is not to of the think of the spirit, no defect. And their theory is that we have many defects can be cured. 100% cured or not, that doesn't disprove a thing, you see. Any no other science is there which can save you 100%. 100% effect is not there. But to a great extent, conviction can protect a person. There may be defect also in another side, but anyhow. So first is philosophy, to give a sort of foolproof understanding to the mind. The mind will not accept a thing unless you are definitely, yes, more or less, I am following the truth. Whatever is your level of truth. I cannot follow the level of truth of Ramakrishna. I don't have the level of truth of an animal also. I am in between somewhere. So whatever your level of truth, you must have some conviction it's a, it is the truth. Second idea, as a technique, you practice it. Technique will give. Third idea is to lessen the weaknesses. Weaknesses. Say pain in life. You want to bear the pain. And for some reason, you cannot do away with the pain. In life, it comes. So how do you lessen it? One is philosophy, one is strength. Another is just to try to understand the situation. Understanding the situation. Even this the idea that, oh, in life there is pain, I cannot avoid it. This acceptance of that idea, that itself will lessen pain. Acceptance of that idea. Say you have got cold, you feel so bad, uh, whole body is aching, eyes uh, are watering, I feel so bad. Then you open the newspaper and find one million Americans are suffering from some flu, say Hong Kong flu. Normally flu comes from outside, but anyhow, <laughs> uh, Hong Kong flu. So you feel better, better. Previously you thought your pain is same. But previously you thought, you, I am the only person chosen in the whole world to suffer. Now you know one million people are suffering, so you don't feel so bad. Though your pain actually has not lost. I am trying to advocate the idea of mind can change the situation. The another idea of same mind, valuation, change of valuation. You feel pain. I've got an ordinary car, he has got a better car. I've got an ordinary child, he has got a better child. And of course, I am poor, that man is rich. Normally, people feel bad about it. It depends upon my attitude towards things. Suddenly, you become, huh? and as many people are turning, a love of the earth you develop, ecology, this, that. Suddenly, many things you are ready to give up. Huh? At one time, you cannot manage without coffee, then you hear that coffee is very bad, then give up. Because you know it is good to give up. So some conviction has come that you are convincing your mind. Or valuation. At one time I thought having a big car is a status symbol, though it is inconvenient, but uh, in certain areas, certain areas convenient. So st I changed this status. I'm, now I'm getting out, I'm retired. I did not maintain all the poses necessary for this. Or I'm not no more interested in some of the things. 
valuation gets changes. When valuation gets changes, you are not affected by lacking something. As they say, there are two ways of becoming rich. One is, of course, become rich, get money. The other is not to have wants. If you lessen your wants, you are a rich person. If every morning you require this thing, you are required that thing, or your wife or husband requires that thing, then you are in trouble. But if you don't want, you have no frustration, no desire. Now, normal life, we are we are trying to analyze and trying to the extreme position. Normal life will be a mixture. Mixture, but you must be prepared that there will be some suffering also. There will be some suffering. The moment you expect something, you may not get it. You have helped somebody and expect that he will be grateful. He may not be. Then what do you do? You will have to accept the idea, though I may help, he may not be grateful. That is the important point. So that, that is what the theory is doing you. By preparing your mind, are you changing your attitude towards suffering? As I often give the analogy, some people go to hiking. Hmm? When I first came, I found several people going, oh, I went for hiking. What, oh, we enjoyed wonderful enjoyment. What are those marks? Mosquito bites. That means it is not all, all enjoyment. But the idea is I am not cooped up in the office, I am gone out and moved around, it gives a joy. The actual experience is pain, pain really. If you go on, eh, you go on climbing the mountains, uh, one week of pain will be there. Hmm? <laughs> but because of psychological idea that, oh, I have enjoyed a free life, that gives a... Or another example, I often give that, exercise. What is exercise? Giving pain to the body. <laughs> hmm? But if you give half an hour pain to the body every day, you will have 50 years of good health good health for 50 years, so the pain becomes an enjoyment. Pain becomes a promise of enjoyment, actually, a promise of enjoyment, that if I undergo this pain, life will be better. Yeah? So pain itself turns into an enjoyment, or at least becomes bearable, at least becomes bearable. That is the important idea. Many years ago I read, I, I'm sure varieties of psychological theories in the meantime have come out, thousands of books are being printed. One man said, there are six basic fears of man. Three of them around the body. The fear of growing old, fear of, fear of falling sick, and of course fear of death. These are the three major fears of man. And three more fears, fear of losing the loved one. Fear of losing the love of people. Not merely wife, husband, but other love of people. And then fear of insecurity. Economic insecurity. Financial. Then sixth, I don't know whether you agree with it. The sixth fear is fear of criticism. According to him. That somebody will criticize me. That is a major fear according to him. I can support it, of course. You can support it. See, most of the people are moral. Why? Because of society's criticism. Isn't it? Most of us behave well, what people, other people will think. <laughs> That's why behave a little better. So it is true, criticism is fear of criticism, keep the society more or less in line. So that was one of the ideas. So the idea is how to lessen fears. Body's fear, as I argued earlier, one is idea is thinking that I am not the body, something more. Or body is my instrument, I must look after it. In spite of all my effort, if it goes wrong, I shall have to accept it. If I accept it, why accept it with complaint? I accept it with grace. Hmm? Be, be old gracefully, eh? that is, there is an expression. Uh, gracefully become old. That means you accept it and don't all the time groan, all the time complain. You see, that is the idea. Uh, groaning, of course, somebody says, no, so groaning is good. Uh, that means you feel that at least something you have done. You see? But that is a different question. That the feeling of feeling that is the important idea. So these are the points I have tried to cover. Or why not I add a little more? Definite spiritual technique. Normally when people come to us, I often tell them, ultimately if you agree, especially when you have major illness or old age, today or tomorrow you will die, you better prepare the mind. 
if you have a faith that my body is not my last existence, then there is nothing to fear. That doesn't mean there will not be pain. Pain will remind you. If there is no pain in the disease, it is a question of preparing the mind. Either I shall be, I shall be remaining eternally with God, as the spirit that being my nature, or I shall be given more chance like the Hindu Buddhists. That doesn't mean only Hindu Buddhists will be born. Everybody will have to born if this theory is right. Hmm? Somebody says, I am a Christian, I don't believe in it. That doesn't mean you cannot be born. <laughs> yeah? if the, it is a question of what is the reality. But then a hundred percent proof to give is difficult. So you'll have to choose or try to find out arguments for or against and make up your mind. But when the mind accepts that will be lessening of pain, lessening of anxiety, fear. But at certain point we shall have to realize that point, otherwise full fearlessness will not come. To make mind strong, assert, strong meaning, making the mind strong, asserting, asserting on a truthful situation. That you must convince yourself by argument, philosophy, thinking, meditation, grace of God, grace of holy men, all these are various methods of strengthening the mind. Then as I started telling about fasting, austerities, this, that, another method of strength. Modern men have strength. You see, most half the women of the world, I think, they go on slimming. That means tremendous austerity, not to... St food is there, you want to jump on it, you restrain. It is, it is tremendous austerity, but strength is the mind. A child begins to food. Begins food, food is there, animal hunger is there, jump on it. How to train the child? When the child grows, no, no, you cannot take it till everybody has got it. Or till you have says, said grace to it. Now for a two, three year old child, there is tremendous training. That I can control my emotions for half a minute. When he grows up, many thoughts will arise. Shall I go and beat that man? You wait. Count ten, they used to say. <laughs> In our childhood, they used to say, count ten and then, uh, then fight. By that time, much of the emotions will be controlled. That is the idea. Self-control. Is, that is socialization of the human animal. That is called socialization. To adjust in society. Uh, you, a child is there, dumps on the food. Mother trains up. You can jump in your own house. But in somebody else's house, you cannot jump there. Hmm? You have to restrain, ask permission. Can I take it? Please, this, that. So these are training. By training, you can change the quality of your experience. We are not talking about happiness, because happiness doesn't require any training. You are happy, nobody complains. Hmm? You are healthy, nobody complains. You complain when you are not happy, when you suffer, or you are ill health. That's why often you'll find one-fourth of the religious books are full of suffering. They talk only about pain and suffering. Somebody asked me once, why religious books all the time tell about this? Pain and this. The reason is this, when everything goes fine, you don't bother about anything. When something goes wrong, then you ask why? Or why me? Why I am suffering? Why not the other person? <laughs> that is how the, all the questioning arises, because of defect, lack of things. So the idea comes, Training the mind, changing the attitude. Easier to change the mind if you change the attitude. Change the attitude. How do you change the attitude? By bringing certain theories. Some of them I try to bring in. Then the Buddhists say, you have retired or you have not retired. How to spend the time? Half the time of the day you spend only in reveries, as they're called. Try to lessen those thoughts and concentrate on certain fruitful thinking. So the advice you have is to japa, uh, regular japa if you do, the advantage will be mind will be occupied, something good will happen. If you are a devotee of God, something positive will happen because of this acceptance of idea. So attitude, changing of attitude, practice of some disciplines to strengthen the mind. So these are the methods of strengthening the mind, lessening the weakness, and create a sense of hopefulness in life's areas, life's areas. We must remember that everybody cannot get everything. It is not in the nature of things. In duality there will be differences. Lessening the difference is a goal for the idealists. I must try to lessen the difference. 
But in spite of all my effort, some type of difference will remain either in body or in the mind or in some areas. So mind must accept certain ideas at the same time strive also. So Gita brought this idea of detachment, the idea of doing work for the sake of other people. But detachment important idea. The, uh, another devotees have brought the idea of surrendering to God, thinking of Him. These are the religious, especially religious methods of my, making the mind accept the situation or strengthen it to strive for something higher. Now these ideas are good, but the result will come if you practice it. Unless you practice it, nothing will happen. So we shall have to assert and also depend on the Lord, both. Sometimes people feel a conflict. If I have to practice surrender to God, and then how do I assert? It is true if it is the basic only attitude in life. But in day-to-day -day life, what you do, you strive for getting something. As long as Sri Ramakrishna has asked this question, how long have we got duties towards other people? Wife, children, this, that. He said, as long as you children, he said, when they grow up, no duties. Wife in India at one time, they were dependent. Now they, they also earn money. But anyhow, uh, they said, you have to look after till, as long as you look after your, your own body. But Vedanta recognizes a stage will come you cannot look after your body. You are so God, full of God, then God takes over. God, uh, things will come to him. Hmm. Things will come to him. Of course, when he gives up to God, doesn't mean that God has, every time he will bring, he may not bring also, but he is prepared for that. That prepares for that. That is the, mentally he is prepared, complete surrender. See, I'm Christian, like mew, mew, as a church. So these are the techniques that we apply, normal common sense techniques, psychological techniques, then philosophical techniques, then the spiritual technique. By combining all of them, try to make yourself as free from fear and weakness as possible, and as full of hope and strength and courage as possible. That is life. Thank you. addresses the mind and says, Oh my mind, at least one time, repeat Harinama, Bhagavan Ka Naam. At least try to meditate, think of God, and then you'll cross the ocean of samsara. <coughs> Hare 
हरि 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 बोले हरि 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 बोले हरि 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 बोले मन एक बार हरि बोल हरि 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 बोलो हरि 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 नंद रूपारी पतित पवन मन एक बार हरि बोल ब्रह्म नंद रूपारी पतित पवन मन एक बार हरि बोल 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 मन एक बार हरि हरि प्राण सखा भ्रता हरि प्राण सखा भ्रता हरि मन कहे राखा हरि मन कहे राखा हरे ब्रह्म मन मन करो ध्यान मन एक बार हरि बोल हरे ब्रह्म मन मन करो ध्यान मन एक बार हरि हरि ब्रह्म मन मन करो ध्यान मन एक बार हरि बोल 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 हरि 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 बोले बोलो हरि 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 बोले हरि 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 बोले मन एक बार हरि बोल मन एक बार हरि बोल मन एक बार हरि बोल मन एक बार हरि Next Sunday, my name has been announced, but instead of that, Bedrupanda will give the talk because later I found I have got some other place I have to go and lecture. So that is next Sunday, and probably similar topic he will take up, whatever is there. This tomorrow, Memorial Day. Memorial Day, we shall read the complete works of Vivekananda. Eight volumes are there, forty-five hundred pages. Each will be given thirty, forty, fifty pages, according to the number of the people who come here. And unfortunately, we have announced to bring your own lunch. Eh? <laughs> Normally, most of the occasions we feed. So, but that remains liquid still be supplied. Now, ten o'clock it starts. The idea is each one will be given certain pages, and all of us together will finish the whole book, probably in two hours. And there will be break, then there will be meditation hour, worship, then a break, and then there will be Vivekananda Oratorio. Original composition for soloists and men squad. That will be at two thirty for one hour or so. After that, there will be some talks and some singing. It will be there and break at four thirty. Break at eleven forty-five once and again four thirty. But it is essential that you come early, not at the last moment, is it? <laughs> yeah. Because you have to read ten a.m. We start. Try to come in time so that otherwise we shall be reading will be prolonged. Mm -hmm. 
a little bit of a problem because this is sort of how, you see, is <coughs> sort of how, you know, a new type of discipline you can say that I shall read the entire book or I shall do 100,000 japam as you do Durga Puja time. Mahapurush Mahasayam Shivananda used to say 100,000 uh, japam if you do, that is equal to one Durga Puja, which is a very popular program in India. So here also we do in, during, in October. That is by japam. This is by reading, another type of modernized. People love reading, but methodical reading, silently, not loudly. So I request you all of you to come. And come at 10 o'clock and stay as long as you like. If somebody has something, you can always escape. There's no problem. <laughs> I shall close with the chant. Last time some videos were shown, religious videos or our programs in other centers. And this time it may not be necessary. If necessary, we can introduce something. Other I, my idea is to make people talk. And make people talk on complete works of Vivekananda and some Vivekananda ideas and discuss. Two, three people talking will be enough, not the professional speakers. We are the regular speakers, so we won't talk much. Uh, it's the Swami I may, but some of the devotees. So if somebody likes to talk, come prepare so that on the spot I shall ask, you must get up quickly. Yeah? <laughs> I'm not fixing anybody, so then I am, I am bound. If I fix somebody, there may not be enough time. That is the question. Yes. That's why I'm not committing. I shall close with the chant. You know we have got a, practically every day some class or other is going on. Uh, Tuesday, I am going to take now Panchadashi. One Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta classic. All this time I was taking devotional books and Narada Bhakti Sutta, so I am changing the book. Uh, that is on f Tuesdays. When first two Wednesdays, Sarvadeva and the other Swami will take Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Thursdays, by turns, they take Upanishad or Gita, three, four people, <coughs> monastics. Friday again, a sort of a discussion group, some of the monastics and the, some devotees. And Sunday, of course, Sunday is the main day. That doesn't mean all of you will have to come to every program. You come where, what, what suits you. But as they now and then say, at least come once a month, then you know you, you are there, you see. Once a month if you come, that is all right. Yeah. But if you feel energized, enthused, come more. Or occupied, you see. All right. I shall close the chapter. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mitturma Amritam Gamaya, Sarbe Loka Sukhana Bhavantu, Sarbe Santu Niramaya, Sarbe Bhadrani Pashantu, Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhagat. Lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, lead us from death to immortality. May all people be happy, may all people be free from disease, May all experience the good, may none be subject to suffering. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace. Peace be unto us.